So this is a revision session about photosynthesis. Please make sure that as well as watching this, you also uh, read the Caboodle textbook and you use resources on KA Online and also free science lessons. This is a very, very brief summary of the key facts that you need to know. So we know that photosynthesis only takes place in plants. We know that it's the method by which plants are using light energy to create their own food, and in this case, it's glucose. We have to know the word and symbol equation. So it's carbon dioxide plus water goes to glucose plus oxygen. That's the word equation. We can easily turn that into a symbol equation. CO2 plus H2O goes to C6H12O6, the only new one that you might have to learn if you don't know it already, plus O2. And we have to be able to balance it. And it's really easy. You just put a 6 in front of everything apart from the glucose. So we can think about where we get each of these uh, molecules from. We know that this carbon dioxide diffuses through stomata from the environment into the leaf. We know that the water enters the root through osmosis. And we can link this back to earlier lessons that we did, or you might have revised earlier. This is on the transport section, and this is in the pl uh, tr uh, plant transport mechanisms. We need to know some other key facts. We need to know where it takes place. So it takes place in the chloroplasts, in palisade cells, primarily. We have to know that it is an endothermic reaction. It's taking in energy. And the energy it is taking in is light. And the light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll, which is in chloroplasts. Some people write light on the arrows. Please do not write light on the arrows because you don't get marks for that and it's very confusing and in fact you would negate a mark. Okay, so we've got our carbon dioxide diffusing through the stomata. We've got water which is entering the root through the uh, via osmosis and both of these things are then going to go into your chloroplast. They're going to react using light energy and we're going to create glucose and oxygen. And the oxygen is either going to be used in respiration or it's just going to diffuse out of the stomata as a waste product and we then eventually breathe that in. The really, really key thing is what is happening to this vital substance of glucose. Well, there's lots of things that can happen to that glucose and we need to know them all. So the first thing, it could be used just like the oxygen in respiration. It could be converted to starch and it can be stored once it's converted to starch and that gets stored in the roots like a potato stores all the glucose that it makes and that potato is your store of starch. It be, can be converted to cellulose we know where cellulose is found. It's found in the cell wall to strengthen the cell. Finally, it could be converted to amino acids. For this to take place, it has to use nitrate, nitrates sorry, from the soil as well. So that glucose is vital. It can be used in all of these different things uh, which are important for the plant to survive. So that's the key facts about photosynthesis. There's one more thing that you have to know, which is due to which is about the rates of photosynthesis and the factors affecting those rates. I'm just going to put PS for photosynthesis. So there's one graph 
that we can draw, which has got the rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis. I'm just going to put PS. And it looks like this. And there's a whole range of things that we can put on our x-axis, but I'm going to start just by putting light intensity. We can see here at point A that as light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis is increasing, hence an increasing line here. But eventually at B, that line is levelling off or plateauing. That means that something else limits the rate of photosynthesis. So in this case, here, as we increase light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis increase, increases. But from this point onwards, even if we increase light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis is staying the same. Therefore, something else is having to limit the rate of photosynthesis. Now, this is a classic graph which comes up in many, many different questions. We can change this x-axis to many things. We could have the CO2 concentration there. So again, if we just look at CO2 concentration, as CO2 concentration increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a certain point where the graph plateaus or levels off and something else other than CO2 concentration becomes the limiting factor. We can also put the water availability. Again, it's the same graph. And the final um, uh, you know, thing that we can have, factor that we can have on the x-axis is the chlorophyll or the amount of chlorophyll. Again, as we increase the amount of chlorophyll, the rate of photosynthesis increases until something else becomes the limiting factor. So this is the normal graph. There's one factor that doesn't have this graph. Instead, the graph looks like this. You still have rate of photosynthesis on your y-axis, but the graph then looks like this. And this is for temperature. And we have to know this in slightly more detail. Here, as we increase the temperature, the rate of photosynthesis increases. But it, at a certain point, it doesn't level off, it suddenly decreases again. The reason why it decreases is because photosynthesis is a reaction and therefore enzymes control that reaction. Enzymes make it speed up. And after a certain point or temperature, the enzymes denature because it is too high, the temperature is too high and therefore the reaction can no longer take place. So at the beginning, we have an increase in temperature causing an increase in rate of photosynthesis. And that's due to increasing kinetic energy. And if you look at the video on enzymes, you'll learn more about that. Here, the enzyme has denatured. Causing the rate of photosynthesis. To decrease and eventually stop because the enzyme is so deformed and therefore ill denatured, I should say, and therefore is unable to catalyze the reaction at all. So there is a very brief summary of photosynthesis. As I said, please do use Caboodle, please do use KA Online, um, and have a go at the multiple choice quiz underneath now.